welcome to the LDN Radio Show, brought to you by the LDN Research Trust. I'm your host, Linda Elsigood. I have an exciting lineup of guest speakers who are LDN experts in their field. We will be discussing low dose naltrexone and its many uses in autoimmune diseases, cancers, etc. You're invited to join us on air asking your questions by calling in on the local rate phone numbers in the UK and the US, which can be found on ldnradio.org. Thank you for joining us. Our guest today is Dr. Kent Holtoff, who is the Medical Director of the Holtoff Medical Group and the nationwide Holtoff Medical Group Affiliate Centres. He is also one of the LDN Research Trust Medical Advisors. This show is sponsored by the Holtoff Medical Group, whose goal is to improve the quality of life for everyone they see, especially those suffering with chronic conditions. Their physicians will provide you with cutting-edge, personalised care that delivers measurable results. To learn more or book an appointment, call 1-877-508-1177 or go to holtoffmed.com which is H-O-L-T-O-R-F-M-E-D dot com. Well, thank you for joining us today, Dr. Ken Toltoff. It's a real pleasure to have you here with us. Oh, well, thank you so much for having me. And uh, I just love doing these things and getting the word out with this really amazing uh, treatment. So thank you. Could you tell us how you became involved in LDM? What led you down that path? Yeah, well, my story is very similar to you. Look at people in integrative medicine. It's usually that they've had a you know, family member or someone sick or themselves. And it turned out in my case, it was myself. And, you know, basically going all the way back from birth, I was born at six months, wasn't supposed to live, was supposed to be retarded, uh, and um, always had kind of problems. I mean, I did... Uh, Function so called normally, but there are a lot of weird things were going on, like my pupils were unequal, went to neurologists, they don't know why. My right arm would just stop working and they don't know why. Uh, terrible sweats and achiness and uh, couldn't get up in the morning. So, but lived like that and started high school was pretty good, college started feeling a little different. Hey, something's not quite right. Then as I got into um, medical school, it's like, oh my gosh, I'm just exhausted, and uh, I I got energy, you know, 11 o'clock at night where I could work, but can't make my morning classes. So I went to the dog university doctors, and they of course say, oh, you're distressed. It's t- typical medical st- student syndrome. Want to give me any depressed? I'm like, I'm not depressed. I just I can't function, and I uh, memory was terrible. I can't. I still I don't memorize well which is really how most doctors learn, unfortunately. So I had to learn concepts because I can't memorize like names and uh, things like that as, as well as I think. I mean, people don't notice, but I notice. Um, and then uh, through, through, um, call it, through medical school, I started getting worse. It got to the point where, oh, my God, I don't think I can do medicine. I can't, um, uh, I, I can't sit there and talk to a patient. It's too exhausting. So what I did, I went into anesthesia because you don't have to talk to the people. They're asleep, right? (laughs) So, uh, and then, so started getting, hey, something's terrible here. Now, I was very evidence-based. I still am. uh, Was very closed-minded, one of those doctors that don't want to hear it. And, uh, and, but I said, hey, this isn't, nothing's working for me here. I'd been to numerous specialists at, at that point. No one knew what was going on. It was basically chronic fatigue syndrome before there was chronic fatigue syndrome. And, um, and so went to some alternative conferences, and which I never would have gone to before. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, this is more evidence-based than I was taught in medical school. So uh, went on, basically, I was low normal thyroid, low normal testosterone, low growth hormone, um, and, uh, and basically went, went on all those hormones. I'm like, oh, my God, that was like 70% better. I'm like, this is great. And anesthesia, I was doing anesthesia is the most mindless specialty 
they try to just memorize it or just everyone goes put you put people to sleep um and that's the bottom line so it was like i was dying of boredom so then uh, with all this you know new knowledge and treat myself with feeling good just went into family practice and started uh basically treating patients in a family practice setting and incorporating these integrative ideas or alternative which i hate the word but because i'm telling you it's more evidence based than standard medicine and progress was doing very well, and then I got divorced. And so stress we're finding is a huge problem with all these illnesses, and it causes immune dysfunction, which then sets a vicious cycle to everything. And um, and uh, so, so started treating patients coming from all over the country, all over the world, for these new therapies, and basically just went from there. Then I had a divorce, huge stress, just crashed, was in bed for months. And uh, you couldn't pull my blood out. It was so thick. It was like, like thick maple syrup or motor oil. It was like, oh, my gosh. And my D-dimer, which is a marker for coagulation, and what we're finding with all these patients that low-dose naltrexone helps also is they get immune activation of coagulation where the body is just constantly a low-level clotting. So I had that. I knew I had Lyme. I didn't want to test because I treated Lyme and didn't want it, but um, then I was put at a basically a 50, uh, 50 fold increased risk for cardiovascular event in the next two years. Cause my D dimer was 47 instead of 0.5. And so I go, oh, okay, to get the test course positive for Lyme, Babesia, Anaplasma, uh, numerous things. And, um, so started treatment with those and been pursuing, you know, treatments on these chronic infections and chronic illnesses since. So I'm always looking for hey, the next new thing and how to combine all these treatments. And that's how I got interested in low-dose naltrexone. Hmm. Could you tell me, if somebody wanted to come and see you, I know you're part of a medical group, how do people find you and which states do you operate in? Yeah, so we're in um, El Segundo, California, which is right next to uh, LAX, Los Angeles Airport, so right in uh, the L.A. area. And then we have centers in San Francisco, uh, Philadelphia, and Atlanta. And we do do nationwide consults as well. If um, uh, we, we, can only do, we can only treat via that mechanism in California um, because of a license in California. Oh, and Illinois and Arizona. So I, I, I could do those three. But I, I generally, um, you know, most of the other doctors see most of the patients now. I've kind of stepped back to do more teaching and things like that. But um, we are going to be training, uh, putting together a physician training program. Again, we used to have, you know, 25 centers uh, uh, that do this type of stuff, but it was just too burdensome to run all those practices. So we step back and we're going to do a new model where we train doctors and all this. So pretty soon we should have a network of doctors that do this very similar type treatments. Um, you know, everyone does things different, but they'll have the same basic core knowledge and be able to use LDN and, you know, all the thyroid and with normal patients with have normal blood tests and learn, you know, it's like, wow, the way <laughs> we tell people, you know, the way you taught medicine, the way you thought of medicine, almost all that's wrong. And it is. And it, it's funny. So we're very evidence-based and we show people really how to get the people better that no one can help. And it's uh, the doctors just, wow, you know, it's that, you know, they can't, well, why have they never heard of this? And again, it's all, you know, uh, re the reason that is, it's all multifactorial. It's, you know, basically everything's big pharma. And if it's not a big pharma drug, no one knows about it. So um, we're excited to start that. And that should start in a couple months. And we, uh, we, we've had this down because we've had training programs for doctors for years. And so we're just kind of going to go ahead and expand it. And so it'll be like having centers across the country. So I'll, I'll keep you updated on that. Mm -hmm. And so I think we can help so many more people this way. Just very quickly, um, the LDM book has been a very great success, and you wrote two chapters. Yeah, we, we did LDN in Lyme and LDN in, uh, with thyroid disease and chronic fatigue syndrome. Could you tell us a little bit about how you packaged it together for the book. Yeah, and, and when you look, you know, what's the common denominator with all these illnesses? And, and you know, all the papers that I've written on this and, 
you know, how to treat Lyme disease, chronic fatigue syndrome, you know, treat with thyroid, even though they have low levels, how to show that they're low. And what we find, again, is, and we'll talk about this, is there's two sides to the immune system. One's Th1, one's Th2. The Th1 gets stuff inside the cell. The Th2 gets stuff outside the cell. And our whole world is doing things to drive that Th1 low, Th2 high. And every chronic infection secretes basically cytokines and growth factors to cause the body to do that. So what happens is you don't, you can't fight the infection and kill them, but your body's trying to fight it with a very inefficient method of the Th2. It causes lots of inflammation, causes lots of degeneration and, and, and problems, but you can't fight these infections. So you look at everything from obesity, diabetes, depression, chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia, uh, chronic Lyme. Uh, I mean, pretty much everything you can think of has this underlying problem. So what we really do is we look at, you know, most doctors are, you know, okay, you have this, treat that, have this, treat that. But we find if you get to the underlying problem, so either you do one thing is, is you need to treat the infection, let's say the chronic infection, which most people is driving their problems. I'm telling you, all autoimmune Studies show 90%, all these neurodegenerative diseases, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's. Uh, the head of the, the Harvard Brain Bank biopsied people with Alzheimer's, their brain, found basically Lyme in 100% of cases. He was not allowed to publish that data because he thought it would bring too much, you know, uh, basically panic. Uh, so, you know, that's interesting how that works. But, but the problem is, so let's say you have Lyme. People should be able to treat with antibiotics. It doesn't work because you have no immune system to actually clean it up. You can't give enough antibiotics to kill something. Your body has to be there to clear it out of the intracellular compartment. So it's like HIV patients. You can give them antibiotics, 10 antibiotics a day. They're still going to have infection. So you need to treat the infection, but in order to treat the infection, you have to treat the immune system. Now, oftentimes, if it's not so bad, just treating the immune system works. So with, you know, some autoimmune diseases and um, other things, even depression, we can use the lotus naltrexone. We have other immune modulators as well, but nothing is as safe as LDN and easy to use and as inexpensive. Um, and so that's really our go-to. And then we go to some things that may be more powerful, but they also have other, you know, everything's a trade-off, so other side effects. Uh, so... Uh, so really concentrating on the underlying cause is the key. We don't do that in medicine, really. It's just, you know, here's your, here's your disease. Oh, let me look in the book and see what, what treatment you know, you're approved for. And medicine is just getting worse and worse, unfortunately. It, it's just a disaster. Uh, and, you know, doctors aren't doctors anymore. They're just basically controlled by the insurance company. The okay, insurance company says, I can give you this. But, God, I'd like to give you 10 other things, but they won't cover that. So, you know, there's so many illnesses that we concentrate that just is poorly treated, um, you know, in the standard system. So uh, I think we really, the difference is we're medical detectives, and we really look for the underlying condition and not just treat symptoms. When you were talking about Lyme disease, I have so many people that phone me asking for information on LDN and Lyme disease. and I would say, without exception, if they've had it for a long time, they are saying, I feel so ill, I can't move, I can't live, I'm not sleeping, I'm not eating properly, and I don't, really don't want to carry on living. Um, and I find that terribly upsetting. And then they yep. say, yep. but my doctor doesn't believe there's anything wrong with me. They say it's all you in know, my and, head. And, uh, I, that drives me crazy. And, you know, being a Lyme sufferer myself and these patients, I'm telling you, you can't even explain how horrible you feel. And it's like these muscle aches, just you can't stand, you can't sit. It's just worse than the worst flu you could ever imagine. And it's day after day, and it's horrible. And the problem is doctors say, I don't believe in it, because here's the thing. If they believe in it, now they have to treat it. They have to learn it. So really, it's an ego thing, a, a laziness thing. Also, they know, you know, with the whole system, is that if they get a tough patient, you can't treat a Lyme patient in seven minutes. 
you know, either get a, a seven visit, minute visit or a 15 minute visit, a first visit. They don't get paid for any more than that. So they have to protect their ego in saying, I don't believe it. Otherwise, they're going to have to treat it and lose money treating these patients that, you know, they, they're treating Lyme. You can treat, you know, five patients a day instead of their normal 50. So they're going to go out of business. So it's a defense mechanism and say, I don't believe in that. So now it's, when I say that, I'm not a bad doctor. It's the patient's fault. So if a doctor can't treat it, it doesn't exist, and it's the patient's fault. It's not theirs. That's their thinking. So we see it over and over, and I just can't believe it. It's just like, nope, I don't want to believe it because it's really something they don't want to do. They want they don't want to know. They're happier not believing it. And uh, and we found actually, you know, it's it's interesting. I'm used to it now, but when we first started, we have a patient who said they saw their doctor for ten years, didn't get them better. We send them back three months, six months later. They're totally better. I thought the doctor would be happy. I thought we'd get a call saying, oh, great job. Nope. It's 99% of the time. It's they're mad. They kick the patient out of the practice and say, I don't practice like that. Well, they don't even know what we did. There's no call saying, yeah, I'd call and go, what'd you do? I'd love to you know, help more patients. You never see it. you know. And actually, in all these years, I've had a couple calls that were very interested and all of a sudden, they kind of you hear they just lose interest on the phone call, and I'm like, "What's wrong?" And they're like, "Oh, I can't do that. That takes 20 minutes, mm. you know." And then you look with like Lyme; it's so many systems. They're like, "Oh my God!" You know, usually now they're finding, and you're reading all these medical economics books and or, or journals that come out and really tell you, you know, how to how to stay afloat. Doctors are dying; they're all burned out. They so they just you know you only get one complaint. Nope. You know, I'm not going to treat that. The problem is everything goes together. And so, you know, how many complaints do Lyme patients have? Tons. It affects every system, and you got to treat every system. Unfortunately, it gets it gets expensive because they need lots of stuff, and you have to fix enough systems to get the body working. Then the body can heal itself, and you don't have to be on all those meds. But, you know, doctors aren't willing to do it. They've And it's amazing, you know, they uh, interview many doctors and work with many doctors, and and it's so rare to have intellectual curiosity anymore, you know, and, uh, and, but doctors are really just, they're just memorizing it. Oh, here's the diagnosis. I look in the book. This is what I give. And they don't understand physiology because it doesn't help them. So it's just multifactorial reason that patients are just getting uh, very poor treatment and just getting disregarded. And, and it's terrible when, the doctor says nothing and uh, says, oh, you don't have anything. It's psychiatric. And their friends say, oh, you just need to exercise. You need to eat better. And no one understands. It's a it's a horrible illness. And it breaks up families. And uh, it's devastating. And it's just exploding. So over in America, does insurance cover Lyme disease? Or do they say it doesn't exist, therefore it's not treated so they don't have to the insurance companies don't have to pay. How does it work over there? Yeah, it's it's a it's very hit or miss, but it's interesting. So we get back a positive test for Lyme, let's say with Igenix or Lyme culture. So the California I'm in California, so the California Health Department sends a sends us a letter, asks us two questions. Have you had symptoms for more than uh, six months? If you say the pay if we write for the patient, you know, yes, they have. It's no longer Lyme because they say there's no such thing as chronic Lyme. Uh, and then they ask if there was a physician witness bullseye rash, which occurs maybe 10% of the time. And if you say no, they don't have Lyme. So that's how they track Lyme in California. Now, with insurance, you know, they'll cover a lot, but things are just getting really bad. And I mean, even just basic stuff, even just not Lyme disease, it's like you order a med that's been around 40 years and there's pennies, they won't cover it. It just makes no sense. So it's funny. I'm, I just worked on a paper on healthcare reform, how to fix healthcare, which I'm trying to send out to congressmen and see if, you know, we, we can get some action, but it's a way to really fix healthcare. Insurance doesn't work for basically anything you use on a routine basis. It's like, let's say you had food insurance. You go in, you want some chicken. Okay. You get the chicken. You go, how much is it? Oh, well, we don't know. What insurance do you have? Well, we'll just bill it to your insurance. So you go eat the chicken, 
you wait a month or two, and then you get a letter back saying either, oh, it was covered, there's a $20, you said a $20 copay, well, meanwhile, the ticket only costs $4, or uh-huh. you get a letter saying we, we build the, the grocery store billed $2,000, and we paid 1500 so you owe 500 and you're happy because you go, oh, my gosh, thank God I had insurance because you know, I wanted to pay $500, and they paid 1500 or they may say, sorry, it's denied, you owe twenty thousand dollars you know it's there there's no free market for instance to get a pick line put in which is a long iv takes a nurse five minutes uh it used to be about 150 dollars and with the 300 then with the 500 and 1500 now if you go to the hospital and get them they bill you thirty five thousand dollars at least uh. at our local hospitals and it's like are you kidding me it's all getting to up. copay will be about 500 bucks a thousand bucks People are like, oh, thank God I have insurance. They don't realize you can get it. If not one other uh, company will send a person to you and charge you 200 But it's just criminal what, what, what basically is going on in this country in terms of health care. But people don't – they just think, oh, it must be insurance. Insurance is for emergencies. It doesn't work for routine care. So I'm trying to get this health care reform out there and see, you know, uh, they know it's a small likelihood – but you know, trying to trying to get it out there and make a change. But yeah, it, it is just a mess. Mm-hmm. And even with the chronic illness, they have to deal with it day after day. It's like a full time job. You know, dealing with the insurance companies, they deny everything, and then you got to fight. So it's it's terrible, especially when you're sick. Well, that's the health care in mm. this country is not, is not for the sick. Yeah. Wow, it's um, it's quite an eye opener, isn't it? How, uh, yeah. uh, and like you say, when you're sick, you're not feeling well enough to fight. You've got to be healthy, haven't you, to be able to fight? Oh, and the Lyme patients will know. It's like the smallest thing is just overwhelming. And the phone rings, you're just adrenaline goes up. you got to do an email. It takes all oh, day. You get up. Oh, let me take a rest. People don't get it. It's just it's a horrible, horrible illness. And then, you know, you hear, oh, it's in your head, and all this, you know. The people who get it are generally, they're not lazy at all. It's the opposite. I think laziness protects you because you don't get that adrenaline, that immune suppression. When you need to do something, you don't have that urgency. But for people that are type A, much more likely to get chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia, Lyme. And we're finding, you know, Lyme is in so many families, and they found about 30% of migrant workers coming across from Mexico had Babesia and or Lyme uh, tested positive, but most didn't have symptoms. So the problem is you can have it for 10 years, 20 years, and it comes out when you're stressed or as you get older, or you may never have symptoms. Now, we are got to the point where we check people, especially if they have chronic fatigue syndrome or Lyme in their family, they will say, you know, you're, you're prone to, to getting this, so you need to do some things to prevent it. A lot of people, yeah, 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 and then they come back three years later with horrible chronic fatigue syndrome, which often ends up being Lyme disease. And for instance, we have a family, the whole family is devastated with Lyme, except for this, the, the husband. And we look, at, we look at the blood in the microscope, they all have just tons of Lyme. Their immune system is so low and inflammation is really high. Now, the guy, uh, the, the husband, we look at his, he has Lyme with low, uh, low immunity, but he doesn't have any symptoms because he doesn't have any inflammation yet. And uh, Stanford showed this the same for chronic fatigue syndrome patients. They checked their blood three years before they had symptoms, and they found that they had low immunity, but, and, uh, but no inflammation yet. And then when they, when they flared, all of a sudden the TH2 went up. So, you know, it's, it, now we're coming to the point where we can detect hey, who's going to get this. And they have this the classic TH1, TH2 conversion, which is why LDN can work for so many different people, so many different conditions. And it kind of, I almost don't say that how many things it works for because people go, oh, what a, you know, it's just basically the, you know, the snake oil works for everything. Problem is, it does <sighs> because everything is really the immune system we're finding it's coming down to which is often from a chronic infection or multifactorial. But, and you look at the tests now, like for immune, 
It used to be, you know, they have averages with 95% of the people. They keep shifting the normal range down, and uh, and so people with very low immunity are being prone to cancer, chronic fatigue syndrome, you know, all these illnesses are now so-called normal range. So it's just becoming a worldwide epidemic, and uh, and it's just devastating people's lives, and they aren't able to get the care they need. Thank you. We'll now go into a quick break. Back in a minute to answer more of your questions. This show is sponsored by the Holtoff Medical Group, whose goal is to improve the quality of life for everyone they see, especially those suffering with chronic conditions. Their physicians will provide you with cutting-edge, personalised care that delivers measurable results. To learn more or book an appointment, call 1-877-508-1177 or go to holtoffmed.com which is H-O-L-T-O-R-F-M-E-D dot com. Welcome back. Our next question is from Sebastian. He said, how long would, it, how long would I need to take LDN for before I noticed any results for Parkinson's disease? Oh, and, and again with Parkinson's, uh, we are finding so many times, I'd say 80%, we're finding a chronic infection. Uh, Lyme's very high in the list. Babesia, uh, again, they're generally hard to detect and controversial, um, but we're having great results. I would also do IV glutathione, um, and we see often instant results with that. And you do it, let's say you, you run in the glutathione. Glutathione is dramatic. Uh, TH2 back to TH1. It's one way that they had kind of test these things. Um, they'll deplete someone's glutathione and immediately you go in that TH1, TH2 conversion. So you try to do that in the opposite. And that's a big uh, deficiency in all these chronic neurodegenerative diseases. Um, so look for those chronic infections. Glutathione's great. Um, but low, you know, low cell it depends. Everyone's different. We have, you know, some people within days feel better, other people weeks, other people months. You know, sometimes it just doesn't seem to work if they have a lot of things that are driving it or working against it. So, you know, we kind of ramp up again, 0.5 or 1.5, then 2.5, 3.5, 4.5. Then we'll go to 5.5. Um, and then it seems to, for most people at that point, kind of be the peak where you start losing immune modulatory um, effect. However, we've had some patients where we go up even higher, like the 10 and 20, and they actually seem to have a much better effect. But in general, it looks at, in the studies that there's a, you know, more is not necessarily better. Now, LDN is approved for weight loss along with Wilbutrin uh, and Contrave uh, for, uh, for weight loss. So as you get higher in dose, it, it kind of starts doing different things. But again, everyone's different, so it depends on for you what that optimal dose is. Okay. I had a very nice lady called Mary on the phone today. Um, she has endometriosis and she's been trying to get pregnant for the last five years. She's in her 40s. She's been advised by her specialist to go down the IVF route. Now, she's really worried and concerned. Um, she did ask if they would treat the endometriosis first and they told her they didn't deal with that. Um, she doesn't feel that's a very a very good answer because if the baby is going to live and grow inside of her she wants her insides to be as healthy as she can possibly get them and she wondered what your thoughts would be yeah. yes no i would definitely try to clear that up first and, and interesting we thought endometriosis we didn't know what the cause was and it seems that you know the endometrial lining seems to kind of spill out all over the place but you know, just recently, I'd say in the last couple of years, we found out, you got it, it's immune-related. And lotus naltrexone can be wonderful for it. Um, also, so it, pregnancy can be a problem with endometriosis because you get very high levels of estrogen. And estrogen will stimulate that. And by the way, estrogen stimulates TH1 to TH2 conversion, one reason why women are more likely to get autoimmune diseases. Uh, and progesterone brings it back, will also suppress that tissue. 
So you want to make sure you're on a lot of progesterone um, and do the LDN, uh, you know, right. I would LDN, I would probably stop when you get pregnant. Uh, I don't know any, any studies of it in pregnancy, although we had, we've had women take it um, without, you know, that, that didn't know and the baby was fine. But, Linda, do you know anything about um, LDN in pregnancy? Yes. Uh, another one of our medical advisors, Dr. Phil Boyle, uses LDN in his fertility clinic. You must have nodded off last year at the conference because we had a, a presentation from him. Um, and it was a, a study that he'd done on using LDN to get women pregnant. So they were using it before they conceived, during, after, and during breastfeeding. And he found that the babies were less likely to have to have antibiotics for chest infections and things. They, they were healthy babies. They were happy babies. They were good weight babies. And they were very, very contented. So he just thought it was a win-win situation having these really contented, good size, healthy babies. So that, uh, but there right. are. You know what? And now I do remember that. I remember the the pictures. Do you? <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Okay, so so that, that's great. In general, you know, if we don't, I will generally stop. But it does make sense. And I'm telling you, all these, you get like autism and ADD. You know, what is the underlying cause? It's multifactorial, but it's immune dysfunction. And you know, that's where all these vaccines, you know, come in. And, uh, and you know, with autism and people say, you know, they think it's a thimerosal, but they kind of basically the argument is, well, people, if they don't have a thimerosal, they get it too. Now, a infection during pregnancy is a known increased risk for autism and a lot of developmental delays. And But what are vaccines doing? It's, it's the same thing. It's, it's the immune uh, uh, dysfunction that's caused. So it's not really, not usually the infection that's the problem. It's that immune response. So and that's why vaccines, you know, are certainly um, uh, associated with with problems and autism and that. And you know, it's a big buzzword. And but you know, you look at the studies. Um, a big review paper came out. I don't understand why people don't, you know, basically talk about it more. Where they found vaccinations, you know, the more you do, the more likely it's it's going to happen. Associated with obesity, type one, type two diabetes. Uh, you know, all these autoimmune diseases, asthma uh, from vaccinations. But, you know, it's one of those one of those uh, political things that and financially driven that if you say something bad about vaccinations, you, you know, get labeled a quack and get run out of town on a rail. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, that's you know, that's uh, one thing to do, especially make sure your thyroid is optimal, not just normal. And we find T3 is much better than T4. I can guarantee you're low thyroid, but your levels probably come in the normal range. Now, also, the baby's intelligence is associated with the level of thyroid. There's a direct line correlation. And so, you know, you want to go from low normal to high normal, especially if you're pregnant. And because the baby's brain develops early on and you'll just get a much smarter, uh, happier Better, uh, better brain development in the baby. Mm -hmm. And how long, I mean, she was quite happy to not start um, trying for a baby, to, to put it on hold until she got the endometriosis under control. How long do you think that would take? I would say we can often get improvement in, you know, three months. I'd say maybe give it six months. How old is she? She's in her 40s. Um, I can't remember, mid-40s. Yeah, so, you know, you always worry about, you know, how much time and so you don't want to wait too long. You know, I would look at her FSH and LH, how high they are. I would look at anti-malarian hormone, which kind of gives you an idea of how much ovarian reserve and uh, where you can basically, you know, decide, hey, do I have a lot of time here or, or we got to really move? Mm -hmm. Well, that's been very helpful. Thank you. Well, we have an awful lot of questions here. Um, we have a question from Faith. She says that she's been on antibiotics for a long time and they now no longer work. She, When she goes to the toilet to have a wee, it's normal. She can go, but her, her bladder doesn't empty fully. She's got MS and she's had it for 20 years. She said she tried LDN 
and any higher than one mil made her feel funny. I didn't speak to her, so I don't know what she means by funny. She said, so I stopped. I'd love to go back on it if I thought it would work. Uh, I never thought I would get this bad. I'm in a wheelchair full time. Please, can you help me? Oh, and and yeah, we treat it's funny when you said the bladder. I'm like, okay, there's something neurologic going on there. And, you know, MS is just exploding. And again, I don't know, I sound like a broken record, but, you know, what is MS? That immune dysfunction. Uh, and almost always it's, you know, associated with Lyme. And uh, we're finding even the Lyme lesions look like MS lesions. And we have get just amazing turnaround when, when you treat those things. So you want to, again, find one, number find the infection, treat the immune dysfunction, and with LDN is certainly a cornerstone, a cornerstone of that, stone of that, and uh, you know, and really no downside. You can just do it along with with your other medications. And you look at the other medications, and when you look at the mechanisms, it's kind of like, hmm, uh, you know, they don't seem like they would they would be ideal. So we can often get people off those, and uh, but I wouldn't even try to get off them now. Just let's add to it, fix those other things. And um, and see if we can uh, get you back walking. We see it all the time, so uh, don't don't lose hope because uh, there there are effective treatments. Okay, well, another one and, minute. Yeah, and, and definitely sorry. stay off gluten. I would definitely stay off gluten. And basic things, um, you know, uh, the modified foods. You know, modified foods are finding is an issue. MSG. Gluten, you want to stay away from all those uh, and just really hack everything that's driving that immune system in an abnormal direction. Okay, we'll be back in just one minute. To listen to individual radio shows and interviews, go to www.mixcloud.com forward slash LDNRT. I'll repeat that. It's www.mixcloud.com forward slash LDNRT. Today's show is sponsored by the Holtoff Medical Group. Their aim is to improve the quality of life for everyone they see, especially those suffering with chronic conditions. Their physicians will provide you with cutting-edge, personalised care that delivers measurable results. To learn more or to book an appointment, call 1-877-508-1171 or go to www.holtoffmed.com. Welcome back. Now we have a question from Susan. She says, does LDN help with lupus? Oh, wait, hold on, you're breaking up. Shoot, I was worried about that. I'm sorry. Are you there? Yes. We have Susan who's okay. asking, okay. yeah, does LDN help with lupus? Yeah, and, and again, and all, all these things are just so connected and, and so similar in terms of the immune dysfunction that, that, that we uh, have been talking about. And it's kind of like, you know, immune dysfunction causes so many things and associated with so many things that... Um, you basically just the same same answer. You got this TH1, TH2 um, driving. You know, there's the, that that's being driven in that direction, and so you want to find this underlying. And lupus, like like these other autoimmune diseases, high incidence of infection driving it. And other, there's a lot of other things to do too, and, and also drive that immune system in the wrong direction. You know, heavy metals, uh, a lot of Vitamin deficiencies can do it, uh, you know, stress, uh, and then it causes basically all your hormones to be low, which then basically drives it in that direction. So, again, it's multifactorial and vicious cycle, but, yes, everything that we've said before is uh, holds for lupus as well, and that's kind of the classic one. And, you know, you'll find that your thyroid levels will look normal, but I guarantee you're low thyroid. So anyone with this immune dysfunction is low thyroid. Probably a little, a little. You're probably low adrenals. A little, you know, 10 to 20 milligrams of cortisol a day would be very helpful. 
No, it's not treating with prednisone. It actually boosts your adrenal function, not suppress it. And there's no negative associated uh, side effects with that as opposed to prednisone. So it's, there's so many things that, that can be done, but it takes a little detective work. But um, we see people reversed all the time. Thank you. We have a question from Jill. Um, she says, what do you think of the drug? Is it pronounced Plaquenil? Paxil? P -L -A is the, the antidepressant? I don't know. P-L-A-Q-U-E-N-I-L. Oh, Plaquenil? Okay. Versus LDN for advanced Sjogren's yeah. syndrome. Um, can a patient yeah. take yeah. both? Yeah, so yeah. You, you, you can take them together. Um, you know, um, we use, I use Plaquenil more to treat Lyme, it helps the antibiotics get into, um, basically get into the cystic form. It, it can help autoimmune disease, certainly. Um, you got to check your eyes at least every six months because you can get some problems there. Um, it's not a horrible drug, but I, it's, it's moderately at best effective. But yeah, certainly go ahead and try the lotus maltrexone on top of it. And uh, if you're getting effect, you can back off on the Plaquenil. Um, or, you know, if, if, you're, if you're better, you can certainly take them together. But re really look at all those things that we've been talking about. And you, you, you can check your TH1, TH2. And how, how do you do that? Well, the labs so are typically, you can't, you can you usually look at cytokines and which ones are being produced. But you can do that in research model. But in practicality, it doesn't work. The lab is just too inaccurate. But you can look at natural killer cell function. Okay, and that kind of gives you the Th1. That's, if it's below 30, then you know you have low Th1. Then you look at your Th2, you look at markers such as C4A, not C4, though, usually one C4, C4A, but that's becoming a little difficult to test. Quest is just messing it up and saying they can't do it. So you can check what's called human transforming growth factor beta, human transforming growth factor beta, and that will give you uh, your TH2. There's a lot of other tests that can be done as well, as well as like immune cell function, get an immune panel, which gives you all the CD, you know, CD4, CD8. That's usually when it gets severe. Um, and there's what's called immune activation of coagulation, which has D-dimer and a lot of other things in it. But it gets a little complicated. But you can actually, we will put uh, we, uh, a lab slip for autoimmunity up on our lab, uh, up on our website, probably in the next two weeks. We have one for thyroid and one for chronic infections. One for chronic infections is very similar to the autoimmune one because, again, that's how they're causing their damage is driving this immune system in the wrong way. <sighs> So if you want to check our site at Holtorf Med, H-O-L-T-O-R-F-M-E-D dot com, uh, you can see, um, you, can, you can check that lab out and order it. Mm -hmm. either, either get it to your doctor or we have a couple labs that uh, uh, you can go to for cash. Well, that would be very, very helpful. I know people get really stuck as to what to do. Um, Rachel has a question and she says she's freaking out what does it mean if i get night sweats whilst taking ldn uh, have you heard yeah of that? well my first time oh absolutely it's one of the first questions i asked and uh and we'll, do you know what, what conditions he has she doesn't say yeah well it can be as simple as hey your estrogen's low you know um but when people go oh my god something's wrong and if she has other symptoms like, you know, muscle pain, muscle weakness, um, uh, insomnia, all the things kind of chronic fatigue syndrome-ish, really look for Babesia. And I'm doing a study, just starting a pilot study on looking at Babesia. I, I really think, you know, uh, obesity is infectious. And we have some good data to show that that the Babesia infections often just stay dormant. You don't know you have anything in the majority of patients, um, but it causes hypertension and weight gain. And but a lot of people just get the weight gain. So we're finding a high incidence of Babesia uh, in obesity. So, and there's a book on it by Schaller, who really shows that, hey, the obesity problem in this country or in the world is from infection. So that's what I think that 
some big breakthroughs you're going to see in the next 10 years. They're going to say, you know, people say, I don't eat a lot. Oh, sure, you're eating ding-dongs in the closet. And, uh, and actually we find it's an infection. Mm-hmm. So um, night sweats look for Babesia. It's very hard to detect because there's about 100 species, and the tests only detect two. So what you do is you look for the immune panel. You see if you have, you know, the chronic fatigue syndrome symptoms. And a marker we're finding is called eosinophil cation protein, ECP, eosinophil cation protein. And it goes up with Babesia infection. Now, sometimes it's low, but if you treat, you can even use some herbal products that kill Babesia or an antiparasitic and then test. You can test it before and after. And if it shoots up, there's, there's your diagnosis. And then you can check through hygienics and things like that. Again, a negative test doesn't mean anything, uh, it's a, but a positive really does because it's very hard to detect. Mm-hmm. But, you know, worldwide, it's, that class is the number one infection worldwide. So, so many people have it, but most, 99% don't know that they have it. <laughs> okay. And we have a question from Susan. She says, do you have any experience of treating floaters and crystals in the eye with LDN? Oh, hmm. No, I haven't had good good results with that. Um, I'd love to hear if someone does. But, yeah, it, it, it's tough, and it's, you know, getting older, your eye, basically, it, it's, it's not telling what age does. If you take an eye of someone who's, let's say, 18, 20, throw it down, it bounces like a Super Bowl. Take that of a 60-year-old, smashes like an egg, you know. So you get a lot of crystallization of the proteins in the eye, and those cause floaters. So they're not harmful, but very irritating. Uh, there's some new lasers that, that can be done for it. Uh, otherwise, I've found that they're difficult to treat. And uh, I'd love to hear if anyone did have some experience in benefit with LDN. It, it, it makes sense. It's possible. Um, but I haven't seen it. Okay. We, we have rather a long question here. And just glancing through it, I probably don't understand it, but... You, you will. It's from Christy, and she says, I was diagnosed two years ago with sciatic arthritis, Sjogren's, chronic mono, and about a year ago with Hashimoto's. I've been on sulfaxine, is it, for two years, and clarithomycin, clarithomycin, yeah. 500 milligrams, for its anti-inflammatory effects, but I stopped a month ago because my concern for my gut, gut, <laughs> gut microbia. Oh, she was on. She was on uh, clarithromycin. Is that what she said? Yes. She says I okay. take NP okay. thyroid sixty milligrams, and I started LDN in September, gradually okay. increasing to five milligrams. My TSH continues to go up. My thyroid antibody was only 1.6 IU stroke mil. I'm 45 years old and weigh 125 pounds. My rheumatologist is concerned about my CRP, which is at its highest at 5.3, and HSCRP at 11.7. They are down to 0.8 and 3.5 respectively. They have dropped over time, but significantly since going gluten, dairy, and sugar-free. My CRP went up slightly after adding back dairy and a little sugar. He wants me to start on Arvia. I don't know what that is. Which the root, that one, Arvia? Yes, A-R-A-V-A, which I don't really want to take. Should I be concerned with a CRP around one? And should I adjust my dose of LDN? And her dose, if you remember, of LDN is five milligrams. And do you have any other suggestions? Yeah. yeah. So, again, she has, you know, again, we get all these illnesses that have a common cause, immune dysfunction. And, um, and so underlying chronic infection. And, you know, they're showing that she has mono and which basically comes out because her immune system can't suppress it. 
So, so many infections are like that in that, you know, like how people with like chronic fatigue syndrome and Lyme, they'll have 10 different infections, but they have so many because, you know, people, it's kind of like chicken pox. Let's say you have chicken pox, I'm over the chicken pox. No, you're not. Your body just suppresses it. And when you get older, your immune system drops, it comes back out as shingles. So you never get rid of so many of these infections. And so the whole key to this case is basically, you know, fixing that immune modulation. So she has that low TH1, so she can't fight the infection. She has the, the high TH2 causing all these autoimmune and, and name it. You know, and people, a lot of people come in and because we rheumatologists like to put a label on you. But it's really, you know, it's, it's kind of, they're all very similar. And, and they'll come in, they'll go, well, we can't name anything in particular, so you have uh, mixed connective tissue disease, you know, so, which is just antibodies, but we can't really, you don't fit in the category. But again, it, it's that immune modulation that is key. Um, and so you want to do things, find that infection, kill it um, in immune modulators. And if the lozotrexone isn't working, uh, I think you'd be a good candidate for ozone if you can find a doctor that does that. Um, yeah, IV alpha lipoic acid seems to work well in these cases. Glutathione, uh, IVIG, uh, cleaning up the gut, uh, even oral BPC-157. Again, the, the peptides are great for this because they're immune modulation. The thymus and beta-4. Uh, and again, I know it's just throwing a lot of things out here at you, but there's so many options. But again, the key comes down to, you know, they're just kind of treating each little symptom as you got to get at the cause and, and find out what it is. So I, I would go to, you know, infectious disease doctors, unfortunately, I mean, they'll check for, you know, three infections, something like that. But you need to find someone who really, I would say, go to a Lyme specialist because they can look at all these other infections and do immune modulators. And that's kind of the new thing now with treating Lyme. We're realizing that, hey, you know, and I just, I just gave a talk at ILAD, which is the Lyme um, organization here in the U.S., and about immune modulation for treatment of Lyme. And because we find we just don't get very good results unless you fix the immune system. So you have so many things going on. And so you go to all these specialists, and you get this treatment for that, that treatment for that, that treatment for that. But you really got to take a step back and try to find that underlying, you know, thing that's driving this problem. Mm -hmm. We have a question here and I, you've already covered it, but I said I would ask it. Um, Marion, she says she has a friend that came back from the United States five years ago who was diagnosed with Lyme disease. Since then, he's had five strokes. He's confused, rapidly losing his sight and she's just heard about LDN, and she wanted to know if it would help him. Yes, it, it, it's a very good option, and and there's really very few things that it it doesn't you know you that it's contraindicated in, and yeah. You know, so you see with the Lyme, and this is a big thing that we treat is that immune activation of coagulation. So the body basically going to that Th2 will basically the body tries to wall off the infection by laying fibrin along the vessel. So you're hypercoagulable. Now he's probably on some anticoagulant, but the problem is like Coumadin, and I don't know if he's on one of the newer ones, but those generally work more on platelets. So what you really need to use is heparin. And, and that, and then some um, vascular enzymes to help clean that clot up. And we're finding a lot of times is the, um, you know, strokes, the tissue is not dead, but it goes into severe hibernation. So you can bring back some of those, some of those cells, and some of the peptides can work very well, um, as well as stem cells. So I, I, I would, you know, consider, you know, finding a place and doing doing stem cells. Sometimes you go out of the country; they can even inject them into the, you know, arteries that that go into the brain and try to rejuvenate those tissues, but. Yeah, he's he's going to be having, uh, you know, if you check the coagulation panel, which it gets a little complicated. You can go to our website, and there's a whole articles on this immune activation of coagulation, and look at an article called Confounding Condition. Uh, it's written for for the layperson, so it's understandable. But we'll give you, you know, what tests and, and things to order, 
and the particular treatments because, you know, everyone's different is the problem and there's no one magic bullet. But, um, again, immune modulation, immune modulation, immune modulation is a major factor to get all these conditions better. And again, I know I kind of just sound like a, a broken record, but, uh, you know, the more I, I do this and I'm just like, damn, it's, it's all about the immune system. So, um, you know, start there, but you got to find what's, what's causing it. And, you know, what is it Lyme? Most people get grossly undertreated and people say, well, what, what do I have to do? You know, antibiotics generally by themselves don't work. And people say, well, why would it have to be on antibiotics so long? Now, the Lyme uh, replicates very slowly. So a normal, let's say you get a sinus infection or whatever, that infection replicates every 20 minutes or so. So in antibiotics, most antibiotics generally only work when it's replicating because it interferes with that. So usually we give 10 to 14 days of antibiotics, right? That's kind of to make sure you get everything. doesn't always work, but that's the general time frame. Now, Lyme will only replicate every 24 hours, and if you stress it, it goes even slower. Then it gives off what's called persister cells that don't even replicate. But let's just look at the 24-hour one. So in order to get the same time length of how many, how many generations that the 10 to, 10 to 14 days of antibiotics would for the sinus infection is equivalent to two years of antibiotics. So you can see just in that respect, in order to get antibiotics on board for the same amount of time you would a sinus infection, it's two years. So it takes a long time to, to get over this, and it ends up being an expensive illness because a lot of things don't get covered, but um, it's possible to get better and potentially reverse some of this damage. Wonderful. Well, we're just about out of time. We'll have you back again. We haven't even started on the questions. There were so many questions. But thank you very much for being with us today. And on Wednesday, we've got Dr. Patrick Callas here from Canada. So thank you very much, Kent. And I look forward to seeing you again in September. Sounds good. I just want to say keep up the great work. You're doing such a wonderful service for everyone. And it's, it's interesting, you know, how medicine works and that, you know, regular doctors just never hear of this because there's no drug company pushing it. And so I really applaud you, Linda, and making a difference in this world and something that's really needed. Thank you. The LDN Research Trust has its own forum, which can be found at forum.ldnresearchtrust.org or via our website. The forum is divided into sections, so it's easy to navigate and find what you're looking for. You can share your experience, ask questions, keep a journal, etc. Unlike Facebook, the posts are always easy to find and don't get buried. We have a private medical professionals only section. To find out more, please email me, linda at ldnrt.org. Any questions or comments you may have, please email me, linda, L-I-N-D-A, at ldnrt.org. I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you for joining us today. We really appreciated your company. Until next time, stay safe and keep well. Today's show is sponsored by the Holtoff Medical Group. Their aim is to improve the quality of life for everyone they see especially those suffering with chronic conditions. Their physicians will provide you with cutting-edge personalised care that delivers measurable results. To learn more or to book an appointment, call 1-877-508-1171 or go to www.holtoffmed.com.